Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the great state of Montana. This is the Caribbean Cowboy coming to you today from a warmer and sunnier Montana day. Today I'd like to talk a little history. I would like to talk about the 1911 45 automatic. Now there's a lot of controversy around these guns and they've been around for a very, very long time. But first a little history lesson if you please. The 45 automatic cartridge was invented in 1905 on bequest of the United States military and it was invented by John Moses Browning, one of the greatest firearms inventors of this country. What the military was after was they wanted a semi-automatic pistol to be issued to cavalry troops to replace the aging 1873-45 Colt. What they found was is during the battle in the Philippines with the Moral Warriors, Colt's 38 revolver did not give the desired effect that they were after, taking multiple hits to stop an adversary. So what they did is they requested a cartridge that would stop a horse or a man, and John Browning came up with his very, very well-known design of the 1911 pistol. These pistols were in military service from the time that they were adopted, about 1905, all the way up to, I think it was 1983. They served in World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and every other military engagement in the time that they were in service. They were also very popular with law enforcement, FBI, county, city, and state police, and a lot of bad guys too. The thing that's really nice about these pistols is they're made of all steel. There's no aluminum, there's no plastic. And there's just something about these guns, when you hold one, they feel natural in the hand. They make various different makes and models of these pistols. This one is the full-size government, the five-inch barrel. They also make a commander or a mid-size version that's got a four and a quarter inch barrel. And then they also have what Colt, when they first came out with them, called an officer's model, which had a three-inch barrel. All guns are pretty much the same in function and design, just barrel length and size. Um, they make various different makes and models. This one's a Colt. This one's made by Rock Island. It, too, is a full-size government, true to every detail. The one thing that's really nice about the 1911 or the 1911A1 is they're like an AR-15. You can get every kind of make and model and part that you could possibly think of under the rainbow. You can customize these things to the point to where they're a work of art, or you can leave them in their standard GI configuration. The thing that's really nice about them is, is they're like an AR-15. They're up to you. You can do whatever you want with them however you want with them. <laughs> there is no end to what you can do with the 1911. Now, I've heard a lot of people say that the 45 automatic cartridge is very dated and the 1911 pistols are also very dated. Well, that may be true. Different strokes for different folks. But I will tell you this. 230 grain bullet out of a 45 automatic will definitely get the job done against two-legged or four-legged varmints. It's not fast. It's not as snazzy as your new 40 Smith or 9mm, which the 9mm came out in 1902, by the way, so they're both pretty dated, according to some. But there's just something about this cartridge. When you handle this cartridge or the 1911, you're holding a piece of history in your hand. And I have to really say, for a cartridge and a pistol that most say are very dated and are obsolete, they are still very popular. Very, very popular. There is an endless, and I do mean endless, supply of information out on the internet or in books upon these pistols. I could fill a tractor trailer with the amount of information that's available on these. 
They were made by Colt, Springfield, Kimber, Narinko, Rock Island. Uh, you, the, the list is just phenomenal. For a pistol that is somewhat dated, and according to some, should have died a thousand deaths, the market's still pretty strong with them. This particular pistol it has been my concealed carry weapon ever since I bought it back in 1993. Uh, I've never had a problem with it. The only thing that I did do to this one, I put a full length guide rod in it. Other than that, it's all stock. Um, I haven't modified or changed anything. This was, this one here is a 1911 A1. It has a slight arched mainspring housing, but it still has the lanyard loop on the bottom. This particular pistol would have been something that they would have had uh, back around World War I, before World War II. This one that's made by Rock Island, as you can tell, has a flat mainspring housing, no lanyard loop. This one would have been something more vindicative of that they would have carried during World War II. It's got more of a grayish green parkerizing on it. That would have been uh, more vindicative of that time period where your World War I models had your checkered grips, lanyard loops, but that's no rule of thumb. Uh, there was every make and model available under the sun, so it was just all up to whatever the military had in their arsenal. I just thought I would bring these two very nice pistols to you. The Rock Island and the GI model can be had in 45 automatic, 380 super, 9mm. Three very nice cartridges, three cartridges that have been around for a long time. You can get it in the full size, mid size, or the shorter compact officer's model. Colt, Springfield, Kimber, Wrinkle, they're all the same way. You can get them in any make, modeling, configuration you want. Most of the calibers you'll find them in is 45 automatic, 9mm, and 38 super. All three of which have a proven track record. And all three have been around for, well, let's see, like I said, the 9mm was 1902. 45 automatic was 1905. The 38 Super came out in the 1920s. So they've been around for a long time. I would suggest that uh, if anybody's interested in one of these, <laughs> have fun. Research on them is out there. They've been around forever. Everybody carries them, everybody sells them. The, uh, the way you can configure one of these guns for your personal taste is endless, like I said, like an AR 15. I just thought I'd bring this little video to you. I hope you enjoyed it. And from the Montana Mountain Man, Carbine Cowboy and Sasquatch, I'll see you guys next time.